Hey, thank you so much for clicking on the video. Before we get started, there is a major shift coming to the channel come the beginnings of May, but fret not, I will be very active and streaming regularly on Twitch. So if you have not created an account yet and followed me over on my Twitch channel, that is Dark Spider David for the username. So it's twitch.tv slash Dark Spider David. We're currently holding a goal of 50 followers, so if you can help out with that by checking out the channel, uh, checking out uh, past broadcasts that I've done, and seeing if you like what you see, hit the follow button you won't regret it see you then i'm frustrated guys after seeing this movie i am frustrated makes sense to make a batman movie makes sense to make a superman movie hell even a wonder one woman movie but shazam really i kind of had some familiarity with the character i've seen the costume i've seen the guy or the kid rap that turns into the guy before and then a little bit more light was shed on shazam with his inclusion in the Injustice games, <laughs> that's as far as I can really go with my history with the character because I don't, I didn't really follow the character that much as much as I did with Batman or Superman. So for him to get his own blockbuster film, I'm like, all right, DC, what you doing? Obviously, we saw what happened with Batman vs Superman, Justice League, and now it looks like maybe you're getting into the rhythm of things after Wonder Woman and even Aquaman. Even though I didn't fully love that movie, I appreciated certain parts of it, and I kind of looked at it as its own standalone kind of piece despite its problems. So now here we are four months later with the Shazam film, and you might have heard the word Shazam before, but have you heard the story? You might have heard the story about Billy Batson, a kid who gets bestowed upon the powers of the superheroic god by this other entity and it's only done when he says the word Shazam but of course it's gonna attract the attention of someone who wants the power for himself but maybe that's not the biggest issue that Billy Batson has to deal with it's the fact that he turns into a superhero and this is DC's opportunity to really break out of the mold of being the darker edgier one now after walking out of the movie unfortunately on its release date I could not see it with that early access fandango thing because of scheduling conflicts but I managed to see the film and it it left me incredibly incredibly frustrated it left me really frustrated because it made me look back at DC's earlier failings with Batman vs Superman with Man of Steel even though I still like Man of Steel I, I do like Man of Steel I just know that it has a a really noticeable, you know, hunk of problems. But then we move over to Batman vs Superman, a movie that generally leaves me kind of exhausted whenever I finish watching it, which has only happened twice. And then Justice League, which I liked a little bit better, but it still had, you know, so many things kind of plaguing it from the way DC and most importantly Warner Bros. was kind of managing their own issues. Shazam brought those issues back to my brain only because of how fun and good and really well put together this movie is. Yes, I kind of baited you, my apologies, but Shazam is a really good, really fun and very engrossing movie that makes you that makes you remember how fun it is to be a kid and pretend that you're a superhero only for them to uh, only for them to realize that through these films you can become one. And also what makes superheroes so fun and why they don't have to be so dark all the time. We do have that joke in the trailer where you have the kid saying, why well, do you have to be so dark? You're a foster kid who has it all. The movie also kind of serves as an analogy for that to be like, hey, let's not look at these these superheroes having to battle each other sure there could be a time and place for that story arc because eventually they're gonna fight all the villains in the universe eventually they're gonna have to fight each other that's gonna be the next level of drama for the time being let's appreciate a hero for what he is a hero and learn what it means to be a hero and who better to do that than a little kid and who well maybe not a little kid he's a teenager technically but how impressionable the mind is at such a young age so let's thrust them into the world of super heroics and what better perfect way to do that with Shazam and the people writing this film as well as the director David S. Sandberg who's most notably a horror film director with movies like Lights Out whether it be the short film that it's based on or the full-length feature itself as well as the second Annabelle film that I think a lot of people regard as actually being the better one uh, by the way, speaking of Annabelle, look out for a particular creepy cameo. But just like James Wan did with Aquaman, now we got him over with that DC money over here with Shazam. But thankfully, he was able to position the camera where it really mattered. 
on this story of this kid being bestowed powers. And because of that, the movie ends up being a much more tighter film. I'm actually, initially I was kind of worried because when I was doing some pre-edit work for this review, I was looking around images for the film and I noticed that most of them kind of look the same. It's Shazam and the kid Dylan Brian Grazer, I think is his name. I might be butchering his name, but Freddy is the character's name, and it's played by the kid from It. He was the more, you know, narcissistic one. He was the one that was taking all the meds and stuff from It. He's in this film, and they're great together. Zachary Levi as Shazam, he owns this role, and whenever you got him as Shazam, and then that that younger kid with the crutch. Their chemistry is just perfect. You can definitely see them as a buddy. And I said this before, most recently with Samuel Jackson and um, Brie Lawson together in Captain Marvel, I would love to see a showman out of them. And I would love to see uh, a ver- like almost like an animated version of these two characters, Freddy and Shazam, together in a some kind of multi-series part or multi-part series type of thing. And... That means that I wanted more for these characters because I was really enjoying their on-screen presence. But when I was searching for the images, I noticed that it was primarily them two in different locations in Philadelphia. Whether it be in some of the snowy streets, the downtown streets of Los, of the Los Angeles, <laughs> of Philadelphia with the bigger buildings. And then some of the more urban areas of like some of the suburbs and, and you know subway stations and stuff like that. And I noticed how not very different they were. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to use for my review whenever I to these images and that's because the movie is actually tighter in a way where it doesn't necessarily have to tie into every little thing and because of that it works to its best advantage it solely focuses on this kid trying to master his powers and of course you are going to have your villain but the villain is mainly just there to kind of bring about what really matters which is not only the humor but also the heart of the film and also the heart of your central character now though i say that it's a smaller much more compact film that doesn't necessarily mean that it's shy from giving you some cool action sequences there's plenty of cg super heroics like i said flight superpowers all the necessary check boxes but again it handles them tastefully and it never kind of just shoves them all in your face however it does come with a couple of nit- nitpicks that i found on the on my way home that i'm like oh, okay well that could have been better and they really are just nitpicks i really can't bring myself to say that they're full-on complaints that tarnish the film but they're ones that they could have been approved upon i love mark strong and he's the one who plays our main antagonist uh dr savant Sav- savina Sav- 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 something like that but evil villain and he was written in a way that could have made, or rather did make a very compelling villain. In fact, the movie, I don't know this is kind of a spoiler, but the movie practically opens with him, not really with Shazam, which is always actually a good step forward to actually open up with your villain because we can kind of get the gist from the posters and the trailers who our main hero is going to be, but what about the villain? So it's a good way to kind of have your opening scene tackle the villain in a nuanced way and this movie does it perfectly while at the same time explaining the rules of the powers and how uh, Billy Batson gets the powers however Mark Strong as much as I love him as an actor as a character actor and I've seen him in a shit ton of things where he's been magnificent He's Sinestro again. <laughs> That's the best way I can really describe him in this is that maybe David S. Sandberg was a little too focused on directing Zachary Levi and some of the other kid actors, which are generally great. The other kid actors, they again, this movie, aside from Freddy, but also some of the other ones that you get within this uh, foster family are pretty good. Uh, some varying in others. There's actually one little girl who was completely adorable, and I'm very harsh on kids, primarily because I don't like kids. But there's this one little girl in here where I'm like, I'll take you. <laughs> I'll take you. You're a foster kid, right? I, I can get you, right? All right, like, come on. Let's let's go. Let's go to... I hate this fucking place, but let's go to Disneyland. I, I, you know, you're, you're too good for this world. Let's go. But Mark Strong was kind of sort of in his cruise control mode as a villain where even though he was written co- in a compelling way, he wasn't acting in a compelling way. He was just Mark Strong the villain. And like I said, if you've seen him in Sinestro, as Sinestro in the Green Lantern movie, he's pretty much the exact same thing here. And that's one of the things that I was kind of worried about when they kind of double dipped him here in the DC Universe. Speaking of also some slightly weaker performance, our main kid actor who plays Billy Batson, I can't remember his name, but I thought it was a little weird. He wasn't bad and he didn't really annoy me. Like, I I got the gist of him. I just thought it was a little glaring of how different he portrayed himself as Billy versus how Zachary Levi played him as Shazam, if that makes any sense. And to be honest, this was an issue that I was kind of telegraphing a little bit because I saw it from the trailers. I noticed that he was a bit more shy and kind of 
quiet and just, you know, to himself, as opposed to Zachary Levi when he's in the Shazam form. He's all like, yeah, like that. Even later down the line, when he's already kind of got a gist of his powers and he's already, you know, feeling comfortable with himself, he was still acting a little differently than this kid was as Billy. So I don't know if there was a bit of loss, loss of translation there in terms of performance or direction, but I thought it was a little noticeable and this is not so much a problem with the movie itself but more so with again that frustration of how much mismanagement that was going on behind the scenes with dc and most notably warner brothers let's just say that there's little things here and there in the background whether it be with one of the end credit scenes there's actually two the last one's kind of a gag in fact it's probably even a deleted scene that they kind of tacked on at the end but the middle one is like a okay i hate that something in the future but that coupled with a couple things here and there i thought if you guys had handled some contracts better you could have had some awesome little tie-ins and sites and easter eggs and possibly even some cameos but because you guys screwed the pooch on that one very early well, I guess this movie kind of came a little too late, uh, too little too late for that. Nevertheless, those nitpicks were not able to wipe away the smile that I had on my face from the humor, the heart, and just the way that this movie's put together. That it just makes you feel good to have superheroes back. And even though it, it kind of, like I said, teases a sequel while at the same time still retaining itself in a self-contained story. It, it still makes me kind of want to check it out again. Maybe not in the theater, but enough to, you know, maybe check out that steelbook when it rolls around or catch it on TV. And definitely a movie to be an example that DC can get it right. Sure, we've had Wonder Woman, and I am very much anticipating Wonder Woman in 1984. And Aquaman had its fair share of good parts, but Shazam is the movie that really, like I said, it kind of frustrates you in a way where you look at Wonder Bros. and DC and go, why couldn't you do this earlier? <laughs> but better late than never, I guess. So I'm going to be giving Shazam a very, very high 8 out of 10. And this gives me even further hope for the DC Universe. And I don't know if we got anything else from WB and DC later on this year. But this is a template and this is a direction that you definitely want to go. Let's hope that they can keep their track record up. I know that we got some recasting in the future, but hopefully, like I said, it's never too little too late. And, you know, in the world of comics, sometimes you can at least take one big leap and ask the audience to take that leap so you better make it count, DC. Thank you guys for watching my review. Please let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of Shazam. Keep it spoilers free. There's not a whole lot of spoilery stuff in this movie necessarily except for a couple things towards the end. But if... Um, if you're like me, you won't maybe have to worry about that anymore if you've been to a local GameStop. Because there was one particular spoiler that was ruined for me because I went to GameStop and there were some Funko Pops that ruined it. I was like, okay, did not need to know that. But keep it clean in the comments below for those who have not checked that out thus far. If you have seen it, however, let me know what you guys thought of the movie down in the comments. Make sure you like this video. Share it with anybody who wants to check out some kind of opinions on Shazam. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. But in the meantime... Make sure to check out the links in the description below. Follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. Dark Spider David is the username. And, of course, follow me on Twitch.tv. I do gaming streams, commentary streams, as I like to call them, where I just talk to the camera and I answer some of you guys' questions. Uh, those streams come at a regular pace between two to three times a week. So look forward to the next one. And you can do so by hitting the follow button over there on that there Twitch. Or if you'd like to, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and you can check it out when that goes live. Until next time, guys. Catch you, all, catch you all on the next one. I hate it when I can't finish a fucking intro. I'm probably going to leave this part in, but man, oh man, it just qualms me. I am out of here. Ugh. Ugh. I'm leaving this in because it's late at night. I'm tired. And the best way I can put it is that pretty much the entire two-thirds or so of season two which is comprised of 14 episodes as opposed to the season one 13 is comprised of an overarching plot called neogenic nightmare if i'm not mistaken and trust me when you're finished with this plot you're going to be so sick of two particular words neogenic and recombinator Neogenics. Neogenic device? Neogenics is involved. Neogenic recombinator. Neogenic. Neogenic treatments out of the recombinator. Neogenic treatments. The recombinator. The recombinator.